Hey, in our previous lesson, we learned about the complex number. We talked about its algebraic presentation and learned how to add and subtract between complex numbers. Not only that, we learned how to see the complex number. And we finished the lesson learning about the polar presentation that has major advantages when it comes to multiplying complex numbers. In this lesson, we'll see and understand exactly what is the polar presentation and how it helps us. So let's start at the beginning. First, we remember that we defined i to be the square root of minus one. This is the imaginary number. With it, we define the complex number x plus i y. We saw that the polar presentation of that number would be r times e to the i theta. Just like then, we also define w to be the number a plus i b. And let's add its polar presentation by rho times e to the i alpha. Now this lets us do something we've never done before, actually multiplying complex numbers. Z times W would be R to the E I theta times rho times E to the I alpha. Using basic multiplication rules, we receive that the product is R times rho times E to the I, the sum of theta and alpha. What about Z to the power of N? Just by using basic rules, we receive r times e to the i theta by the power of n, which yields r to the n e to the power of i n theta. Now it's time for us to understand what stands behind it and visualize the multiplication as well as z to the power of n. So if we bring Gauss plane and we visualize z, we know that a complex number can be described by an arrow. That arrow has a length, r, which is the size of the complex number, and an angle, theta, that is the direction of that complex number. Just like z, w as well can be represented by an arrow. Its length would be rho, and its angle would be alpha. Now the first thing we want to do is visualize z times w. We represent this product by a yellow arrow. And our goal now is to place the yellow arrow so it represents the product of z times w. Placing it on the plane is our challenge right now. Now let's view it not from a technical standpoint, but from a theoretical one. We know that the product gives us a new complex number with length r times rho. But let's first focus on its angle. Its angle is the sum of theta and alpha. If we understand that and we take theta, add it to alpha, we receive the angle of this new complex number, which means that this product lies somewhere on this line. Its length, well, that's quite direct. Its size, length, would be just the multiplication of r times rho. Now, if we had specific numbers and angles, we would be able to compute it. But visualizing it and understanding it is just as important. Now, let's move on and look at z to the power of n. And in order to do so, let's focus solely on the complex number z. And in order to have a really good understanding, let's focus on a specific number. Let's use the square root of 3 plus i. This would be its algebraic presentation. Its polar presentation would be 2 times e to the i pi over 6, meaning 30 degrees. Length is 2. Now let's start with looking at what would be z squared. We can calculate what would be square root 3 plus i squared, but we'll see now that using the polar presentation is much simpler. z squared would be r squared times e to the 2i theta, meaning that in our case, z squared would be just 4 times e to the i pi over 3. What we get now is a complex number with a 60 degree angle and with length 4, meaning we know exactly how it looks like. We can transform it now to an algebraic presentation, but we don't have to. This is just as good. Now let's move on to z to the power of 3. Just as easily, we would get r cubed 
e to the i3 theta. In our case, we receive 8 times e to the i pi over 2. If we want to place it and draw it, we understand its angle is 90 degrees with a distance that is 8. Basically, we receive the number 8i. That would be its algebraic presentation. Now we can do even more. We can calculate z to the 6. And let's do that. We would receive r to the 6 ei 6 theta, which is, in our case, 64, because that's 2 to the 6, e to the i pi. Drawing it would be a complex number with an angle of 180 degrees and a distance of 64, meaning we receive the number minus 64. Just a real number, it's not even a complex number, doesn't have any imaginary part to it. But we want to understand even better. So let's expand our formula to the nth root of z. Just like our previous formula, we will receive the nth root of r times e to the i theta over n. And just like before, to understand it even better, we'll use a specific example. Let's use the number z equals minus 4. Now notice that minus 4 is an algebraic presentation of a number. It means 4 steps to the left, 0 steps upwards or downwards. It's not a polar presentation. In order to present it in a polar presentation, we need to understand that its length is 4 and its angle is 180 or pi. Basically the number 4e to the i pi. If we want to calculate the square root of this number, we immediately receive an angle that is exactly the half of it, pi over 2. And the distance would be the square root of 4, meaning our number would be 2 times e to the i pi over 2. Meaning 90 degrees angle with a length of 2. We receive exactly the number 2i. If we want to look at the fourth root of z, for example, we're going to receive the fourth root of 4, which is square root of 2. And the angle? Well, we need to divide pi by 4. We'll receive an angle that is pi over 4. And that is the fourth root of z. We can convert it to algebraic presentation and receive 1 plus i, but just like I said before, we don't have to. Now we can continue on and look at even the 100th root of this complex number. Using Polar's presentation, it's quite easy. We receive the 100th root of 4 and our angle would be pi over 100. Meaning, we can visualize it that this number will be very, very, very close to the number 1. Its angle is very close, close to 0, and its length is also very close to 1. Doing the same thing with algebraic presentation would be very difficult to do. But let's take another step further. And let's look at a specific type of family of complex numbers. The complex numbers that share a similar length of 1. All of the complex numbers that I can place on the unit circle. All of them would be e to the i theta. Their length is 1 with a theta angle. And as before, let's look at a specific number out of them. Let's look at z equals e to the i pi over 4. Calculating this number by the power of n is quite interesting. The formula shows us that z to the power of n would be e to the i n pi over 4. Basically, the only thing that would change would be the angle. Let's look at some examples. Let's start with n equals 2, basically z squared. In this case, we would get e to the i 2 pi over 4, meaning we have an angle of pi over 2. Our number changes and it becomes the number i. If n equals 3, well, we receive z cubed. e to the i 3 pi over 4. We're going to have an angle of 135 degrees. We can continue on. Looking at n equals 4, we receive z to the 4 equals e to the i pi, which gives us the number minus 1. And we can continue this way and even look at n to the 100, which will give us e to the 
25i pi, which still would be the number minus one. My point here is to show you that doing multiplications or calculating z to the power of n is quite easy when we use polar presentation. But we're not gonna end here. There is another level of complexity that we have to dive into. In order to do so, we're gonna look at the formula the nth root of z, which is e to the i theta over n, and we're gonna look at a specific example to understand something very important. Let's look at the number z equals minus one. We already know it's an algebraic presentation of this number, and its polar presentation would be e to the i pi, one unit, 180 degrees. But there's another number that has a polar presentation that is different that equals to minus one. If we add two pi, 360 degrees, to this number, to ei pi, we'll find ourselves again at minus one, meaning e to the i3 pi is also minus one. We can do that again. We can add another two pi, another 360 degrees, and receive the number e to the i5 pi. That number is also minus one. And we can do that again and again. In general, the number ei pi plus 2k pi will always be minus one, meaning we have different variations of minus one. Now let's focus on one of those numbers out of this infinite family of numbers that is equal to minus one. Let's focus on e to the i pi. This number has a 180 degree angle with length of one. The third root of this number would be e to the i pi over three basically a number with 60 degree angle, and again, the same length, one. Another number out of this family is e to the i three pi. Again, similarly, length of one, this time 540 degrees. The third root of this number would be e to the i pi, meaning, again, we divide the angle by three and we receive a, a third root of minus one. It shouldn't surprise us that the number we received is minus one because 540 degrees, if we divide it by three is 180 degrees and we receive the number minus one. And we know that minus one is a third root of minus one because minus one to the three is minus one. But now we understand that under the complex plane, it's just one more root of minus one. Now let's look at another one, e to the i five pi number that has a five pi 900 degrees angle. This number, if we take the third root of this one, we would get e to the i five pi over three, basically 300 degrees, because we divided 900 degrees by three. And this would be our third root of minus one. All of these numbers, notice that the three of them are different, are the third root of minus one, meaning that the third power of all of these numbers would be minus one, basically because we multiply the angles of all of them, whether it's 60, 180, or 300 by three, which gives us back minus one. Now we can continue and do that also to e to the i seven pi, e to the i nine pi, and so on and so on but we will receive the same three roots, z0, z1, and z2. They are the only three roots of this problem. Now with this understanding, we can move ahead and implement this understanding in more complicated problems.